Living in Brooklyn was giving him white refrigerator vibes. Welcome back to Wine and Chill. I'm Stephanie, your favorite recovering lawyer, and today we're going to talk about the internet's favorite mm, infamous bishop. A few quick housekeeping things. If you'd like to drink along with me, make sure you follow along on Instagram, where on Mondays I'm going to be telling you what we're going to be drinking this week. So this week we are drinking from Mesa Noir, Bear Rosé, Love Drunk, also black owned. I've had a few of their other wines, so I'm sure it's good. Oh, yes. I like it. We will buy this again. All right. Now, welcome to our new series, a mini series on scammers, potential scammers, alleged scammers, accused scammers. So we're going to kick that series off. We need a series name. I'm thinking scam or sham question mark. So let me know. Do we like that name? Do we want a new name? Let me know in the comments below what we should call our new series. And with the housekeeping done, let's get into Bishop Lamar Whitehead and his alleged robbery. So our agenda today is going to be the robbery. Where did it occur? What is it about? If you didn't hear about it on the internet, don't worry. We're going to get into it. We're just going to refer to this man as Bishop. He refers to himself as Bishop, as if he's the only Bishop. We're going to get into his real estate business or lack of business. A little bit on his lawsuit that one of his parishioners has filed against him. And then we'll wrap this up with on whether narcissism has any place in the house of the Lord. I live in New York, born here, grew up in Miami, like most Jamaicans who realize after they emigrate that they are cold. This background is only useful because we're specifically going to talk about Brooklyn and not Brooklyn in general, but a specific black immigrant neighborhood in Brooklyn, which is Canarsie. If you did not see the robbery on your local news station because you do not live in New York, you may have seen the robbery on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or the TikTok. That is because um, it was interesting. So we're all on the same page. We're going to play the footage. What you about to go through? seen three to four men come in that's all right all right right it's pretty much stating that i don't want i'm not going to do anything right because i know y'all coming for me y'all coming straight to me as i got down one went to my wife and took all her jewelry took off my bishop's ring my um my wedding band and took off my bishop's chain and then i had chains underneath my robe um and um he started tapping my neck to see if anything else. We're gonna stay the facts that we can gather first before we get into the questions. What happened in the robbery, the bishop was robbed of allegedly $1 million of jewelry. Mm -hmm. As you can see, he is on the floor. This all occurred on a live stream because he live streams his sermons. A few questions. Why did he automatically assume they were coming for him? Why was the door allegedly kicked in? Why didn't we hear it? Why was the door locked? Why is the deacon so unbothered? Why are his legs crossed specifically? Why does he have chains under his robe? Why do the robbers seem to know that he has chains under his robe? And my biggest question is, what is the value of his insurance policy on the $1 million worth of jewelry? So let's get into a little um, full LinkedIn resume of who is Bishop. According to his Facebook, he's a digital creator. I mean, I thought he was a, Actually, before he went to seminary, he went to college for accounting and videography. I wonder if that has anything to do with his conviction for participating in an identity theft scheme, which resulted in him serving five years in prison for multiple accounts of identity fraud. To this day, he maintains that he's wrongfully convicted. All the allegations we are going to go over today all have to do with fraud. Okay. I think now is a good time to note that yes, people can turn their life around, but usually when the life gets turned around, that starts with the admission that you did something wrong. He's of the mindset that he has never done anything wrong besides exist and want to wear overpriced shiny stones. He has become to be known as a flashy man. He wears large amounts of jewelry, drives a Bentley, etc., etc. The big question for many people is, where did he get the money to afford this lifestyle? The Bentley, the diamonds, the $1 million worth of alleged jewelry that was robbed from him. And, you know, he said in his own words, he's not getting the money from the church. He's getting the money from being in real estate. I get so many people that be saying, oh, you getting money from the church. No, no, I own real estate, y'all. 
Although the bishop claims that he's this real estate guru, numerous reports have come out that he owes $335,000 to a construction company, that he's in default of the $4.5 million mortgage for a multi-apartment property in Connecticut. If you're in default, that means the bank is about to rescind the loan they gave you, so it's not going to be yours, so therefore you don't own it. So you telling people you're a real estate guru... One of the interesting things that he stated himself is that he is selling courses. He is selling courses to teach people how to buy the block, teach people how to be capitalist kings and queens. I'm going to say it now, and I've said it before. Majority of these online, I'll teach you how to make money courses. Usually aren't teaching you anything. Are awful ROI. The majority of that information is free on the internet. And no, I don't think all education is free on the internet. However, these unproven course people have been running a racket for quite a long time. And it's sadly interesting to see that a lot of these courses are specifically targeted at black people. Hey, here's this shortcut, brothers and sisters. I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. It's giving a uh, hotep scammer. Besides being a digital creator, Bishop is a pastor in Canarsie. Shout out to the Yardies of Canarsie. Canarsie is a neighborhood in Brooklyn, historically and to this day remains one of the holdouts from gentrification and is primarily a black immigrant, specifically Caribbean neighborhood. Lots of Jamaicans, Trinis. If you like roast fish, jerk snapper, best jerk snapper in Brooklyn is in Canarsie. Important to note the demographics of the neighborhood because if you are allegedly scamming and you scam particularly working class poor people, you are a down low person. If you are specifically allegedly targeting working class black immigrant, Poor people, you are an even lower person specifically. And unbeknownst to many people, black immigrants are the most deported in the United States, specifically Haitian immigrants, as well as other Caribbean immigrants. Most immigrants do not report crime that has occurred to them for fear of deportation. Immigrants as a whole commit less crime for fear of deportation. It seemed he put the church in a very specific area to target a very specific group. And I'm not gonna lie, and I'll insert my bias right now, I feel a way. Um, no ma'am, don't feel a way. I feel a way. The church is called Leaders of Tomorrow International Ministries. The majority of the times in New York specifically, if you see international ministries, international church, international blasey blue in the title of the church name, it is most likely a church that targets black immigrants. I would know this because my grandmother goes to one. Now, what has also been very surprising to me, and honestly, back to the point that immigrants, particularly black immigrants, try to stay out of our legal system at all costs, I wouldn't be surprised if there are more instances of what we're going to talk about besides this one lawsuit. This is just one person who decided to file. One of his parishioners, Miss Anderson, filed a lawsuit against him in the amount of $90,000, claiming that her credit was bad and that since he was such a real estate guru, he had actually helped her son find housing, that he was going to help her buy a house, which we saw this practice happen with Andre Leon Talley, God rest his soul. If you'd like to watch um, that video that we did about him and his housing situation, where friends of his, because he had bad credit, friends of his allegedly helped him purchase a house. According to him, the friends then reneged and said, we never let help to purchase anything. It's our house. You happen to be renting for 20 years and customize the house to your taste. Mm -hmm. It's very much giving that. So according to Miss Anderson, Bishop took her $90,000 and in return promised that he would find a home for her, renovate the home and give her $100 a month to live on. $100 a month in this economy in New York. What was she going to do? Eat patties every day? Miss Anderson alleged in paragraph 30 of that lawsuit, Mr. Whitehead fraudulently induced Miss Anderson to liquidate her entire life savings to pay him the investment of $90,000, promising to use the funds to purchase and renovate a house for her. Miss Anderson had materially relied upon the representation of Mr. Whitehead, the bishop of the church, that he would invest the funds in a home on her behalf because he was a supposed man of the cloth and had previously helped her own son secure housing for himself. So according to the lawsuit, he allegedly took her 90000 her whole entire life savings, to make a down payment on his palatial estate in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, because living in Brooklyn was giving him white refrigerator vibes. The house specifically being a large palatial estate with an in-ground pool with a waterfall, outdoor fountains, hot tub, gym, and wine cellar among other luxury amenities. It is located in the upper class neighborhood of Saddle River, New Jersey, one of the highest per capita income neighborhoods in New Jersey. So he want to live in New Jersey, but then preach in Brooklyn to people who most likely won't report him because again, immigrants specifically report crime less. 
Anybody who is specifically targeting the people who make us oxio, the people who faithfully serve us Jamaican patties, the woman who kisses her teeth and then refuses to give you extra gravy on your curry go, doesn't sit well with me. Comical irony of this is Miss Anderson only found out that he purchased this $4.4 million estate because he accidentally emailed her own son with the contract of his new estate. How are you gonna allegedly scam and be sloppy? Pick a struggle. Now mind you, this estate is the same home that after this story broke, investigators showed up at his alleged house in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, but they found a notice on the door, a notice that he had defaulted on the $4.4 million loan. And it has now been shown by other articles that he does not live in that house anymore because he cannot afford it, most likely, and lives in another palatial estate that's a bit smaller, only five bedrooms. Narcissistic personality disorder is a mental condition in which people have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration, troubled relationships, and a lack of empathy for others. Because I'm the victim. My church is the victim. But the media is portraying me to be a villain. And it's not fair. So everybody that's been posting about Bishop, I want y'all to understand that y'all are seeing a true man of God. Um, all of you, those uh, meetings will come. I'm hoping that the governor uh, will reach out to me so we can have a sit down since I am the first pastor to ever be robbed in history in New York City. Calling multiple press conferences, doing multiple interviews, showing up on news stations, showing up on YouTube Live, showing up on other YouTubers' lives to argue and make it all about you. Yeah. Bishop is also oddly good friends with Mayor I Love the Police Adams. This story just gets so interesting by the minute. Mayor Adams said specifically, no one in this city should be victim of armed robbery, let alone our faith leaders and congregants worshiping in a house of God. He also continued to state that he would stand behind Bishop and continue to mentor him. He is a grown man, not an intern. Mentorship is not gonna help him not want to run around with $1 million worth of jewelry when he is a pastor. Solo pastors with little to no oversight are essentially allowed to just run amok in society. From T.D. Jakes yelling at black women to for going to corporate jobs, corporate jobs that literally feed and house the community. Child. To Bishop, tactfully referencing that his parishioners could have been hurt at key moments every time he's interviewed. It would seem from the outside looking in that these congregants are looking for a spiritual guide and those guides are looking for spirits to steadily pocket from. Which, which brings me to a thought that I feel like we've been collectively having every time we cover someone who's, you know, scammer adjacent, an alleged scammer, or to be honest, some of them are just admitting it. What is a psychosis and the psychology behind why people scam? Later on in part of our series, I'm going to try to invite a therapist, psychotherapist, or social worker to discuss with us a little bit more the psychology behind people who allegedly scam. My biggest question is why do they think that they're going to get away with this? Which I know is rooted deeply in their idea that they are smarter than everyone else. But why? So for Thursday's Live, if you have any suggestions, don't forget to hop over on Instagram. I'm going to put the um, suggestion poll up Thursday mornings and let me know what y'all want to talk about in the live. All right, I'll catch y'all in the next video. This week, we are going to be drinking... What is this? <laughs> I didn't even drink any yet.